mixed and entire radicals. <clears throat> so the idea is <clears throat> that we start with an entire radical, something that's just totally under the radical sign. Right? <coughs> so uh, root 75 is an entire radical. And we want to <clears throat> see if it can be simplified, right? And not all radicals can be simplified. But, you know, if it's in the book and it says simplify, odds are pretty good that it can be simplified. Also, textbook's going to show you a slightly different way of doing this. It doesn't hurt to look through the examples in the textbook, as you would have seen one of the test questions, because it was an example in the textbook. But it doesn't hurt to look through the exam. Just sort of flip through them, just kind of, you know, read through them, because you know they're the stuff. And if you're stuck on a particular question in the book, look back at the examples, right? Because maybe there's an example that's pretty close to what you want to do, and you'll say, oh, right, that's what I have to do, right? That, that's how this particular problem is solved. Remember also use Henry's and Walter's <coughs> same deal, right? And just, uh, uh, yeah. Do, do the work, ask lots of questions, should be okay. And no more quadratic, right? Until the cube, which is Wednesday, October the 8th, right? So, cube, that's a week from today. So you got one week, you've got to get up on. That was a week from yesterday. Right, sorry. Yeah, the week from yesterday, so not even, so six days away. Uh, so we'll get the test back to you like tomorrow, right? Last person's gonna write it today. And we'll get the test back to you tomorrow because you'll need it. Okay, and then you'll have the weekend to go through the test, and then uh, you'll have Monday and Tuesday to ask any questions. Tuesday is just straight review. All right, so you want to take your two tests, go home, go through them, figure everything out, right? Make sure you can do all those questions. So if you see them <coughs> again or something similar to it, you'll at least say, okay, I know, I know how to do this now, right? So that's an important thing. Okay, back to this. <clears throat> so root 75 is an entire radical. <coughs> to change to a mixed radical, we want to express the 75 in factored form, right? So it could be 1 times 75, 2 doesn't go into it, but 3 times 25, and we say, ah, 25, right? Magic number. Your magic numbers are the perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 25. So we'll write this as 25 times 3. So 75 is 25 times 3, right? So I'm not changing the value, I'm just writing it as... In fact, in a factored form, right? 25 times 3. And 25 is that special factor, right? Because then we get to, as you saw in the video, you get to split it out. So the, the, the root of a product, right? So I take the product and take its root is the same as the product of the roots. I take the individual roots and then I multiply them together. And what's root 25? 5. So this is... And 5 root 3 is a mixed radical. <coughs> and you're saying, well, why would I want to do that? That's just more complicated. And the reason we do that, as you saw in the, in the previous unit, was maybe there's some canceling that then goes on, right? That you can reduce. You can simplify it <coughs> because in the quadratic <coughs> formula, you might have a 15 up front plus or minus 5 root 3 over 5, and they all have factors of 5. You can divide that out. You can simplify. Okay. So simplified form means you have to take the entire radical, express it as a mixed radical if you can, and then see if you can do any further simplification. Right? Why? Because the multiple choice answer you look at is not going to have 15 plus or minus 5 root 3 over 5. Right? Let's say we got this, 15 plus or minus root 75 over 5, which we are then going to say 15 plus or minus, okay, root 75 is 5 root 3 over 5, and they're all divisible by 5, so we divide 15 divided by 5 is 3, 5 divided by 5 is 1, we just don't write a number then, we just write, and the 5 divided out, it's gone, right, it's just a 1 on the bottom. So we just write it. Okay. So this is the answer you've got. And you're looking at multiple choice, and they all look like this. 
three plus or minus root three, five plus or minus root five. So it doesn't look anything like what I have, but they are the same. Okay. You just have to be able to change the entire radical to a mixed radical and reduce. Okay. And that's why we do this. Right. <coughs> okay. Good. You know? Just really, it's just doing a bunch, right? And if you can get to the point where you can look at root 75 and just say, that's 5 root 3, then that's good. You know, if you're not sure it's 5 root 3, you know, just plug it in your calculator, right? Root 75, enter, 5 root 3, enter. You should see the same number, right? If you do, you know you did it right. If you don't, you know you did it wrong. When do you do that? Later on in the test, right? Don't do it as you're working. But if you, you know, when you're done the test, you come back to check and you say, I said root 75 was 5 root 3. Now you can sit down and enter them both in your calculator and see if they're the same. And if they are, put a little check mark there and say, good, I think I've done it. Okay, and if they're not, then okay, you got it. Yep. Oh, I'm just kidding, never mind. Okay. So sometimes, let's say we take root 32. <clears throat> so what's 32? What, what can I write it as? 4 times 8, right? <coughs> so you might say, okay, root 32, okay, I know what I'm doing now. 4 is a perfect square, right? There's 4, perfect square, it goes into 32 8 times, right? So I got 4 times 8, good. Okay, so how do we write that? Well, now we split up the roots, root 4, root 8. And now we change the root 4, because it's 2, right? So are we done? No. Now there's a problem now. What goes into 8? 4. So we got to do it again, right? Uh, so this is 2, and 8 is 4 times 2, which is 2 root 4 root 2, which is 2 times 2 root 2, which is 4 root 2. So <coughs> you're done when there are no longer any perfect <coughs> squares that divide into the radicand. The radicand is the fancy name for the thing under the radical sign. So root 32 is also what times what? It's also 16 times 2. Which is root 60, root 2, which is 4 root 2, and there are no perfect squares that go into 2, right? So 4 is the tough one. Because if 4 goes into it, maybe 16 goes into it, right? And if 4 goes into it, and then you find out 16 goes into it, maybe 64 goes into it. So you need to check those, right? If 25 goes into it, you don't have to worry about anything else, right? There are no other multiples of 25 in the chart of perfect squares. Right, but 4, 16, 64, right? They're all multiples of 4. So just take a look, right? Because, you know, what's easier? Left side, right side, right side. Okay? Still the same answer, right? Like, you're ultimately, you've got to end up with 4 root 2. If you can look at root 32 and just in your head, just say 4 root 2, write it down. How do you know you're done? It's The idea is just when I think I'm done here, just say, okay, is 4 going to it? Oh, it does. Okay. At which point you might just back it out and go do this. Right? Like instead of doing going through the whole set of steps again, just say, oh wait, 16 goes into 32. I shouldn't use 16. <coughs> Hundred and twenty eight. What is the largest square? You're looking at him on the board there. What's the largest square that goes into 128? Somebody said it. Say it louder. 8 squared. 8 squared, yeah. So what, what's the largest square that goes into it? 64. Okay. No, no, no. 64 squared is... Uh, 64 times what? <clears throat> 2. I could square 64 for you. Yeah, I don't have to use my fingers to take one. Uh, so now what do we do with 64 times 2? Okay. So you could jump to 8 root 2, or 
you know, here, we're, we're just going to go more detail, right? So root 64 root 2, 8 root 2. Okay. Now some of you might have looked at 128 and just thought that's 8 root 2. Okay, which is good. How would you check if you got it right? Type in the square root of 128. Type in 8 root 2. Hit enter, right? We go root 28, enter. 8 root 2, enter. See the same number? Be happy. If you could do that during a test and it doesn't take you that long to do, then do it. But you know, again, I don't want you wasting a lot of time on questions that you, you, know, you may have gotten right, and then you spend five minutes figuring out that, yeah, it really is right, and then you just don't get the last page done. Okay. Speaking of not getting the last page done. Um, the root of 288. What's the largest square that goes into 288? So start with 4. Does 4 go into it? All right. So 4 goes into it, then you want to say, does 16 go into it? It would help to have a calculator. 16 goes into it 36 times? Or 36 goes into it, sorry. Yeah, 8 times. 36 goes into it 8 times. Wait a sec. We know that 8 has 4 in there, right? So... Yeah, so what, if, we, if we split the 8 in, so if you, you got the 36, right? So you say 36 goes into it 8 times, but the 8 has a 4. Let's pull the 4 out of the 8 and put it with the 36. What's 4 times 36? 144. That's not on my table there. 144 times what? 2. So it's the square root of 144. What's the square root of 144? So it's 12 root 2. <clears throat> okay. Let's say you've done the 36 and the 8, right? What would it look like? So you'd go, uh, it's root of 36 times 8, which is root 36 root 8, which is 6 root 8. And yeah, at this point, you may know that root 8 is 2 root 2. At some point, you are going to know root 8 is 2 root 2, right? Like, it's just, yeah. What, what's, uh, what's 1 plus 1? 2. What, what's 7 plus 9? You'd have to think a little bit more about that. But no, what, what's 3 plus 2? 5. You know, did you think about, okay, what's, he's asking me addition, right? What do I do in addition? I have to take, like, 3 of these, and then 2 of these, and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3. You know, you didn't think that, right? What's 2 times 3? 6. Did you think about that? No. It comes instantly, right? When you first learned 2 times 3, you had to think about that. Right? It's like when you first learned to drive, it was like, oh my god, like there's a lot going on, right? I have to think of it. I gotta sit in my I gotta put the seatbelt, I gotta adjust the mirrors, and this, and I start the, the engine. Oh wait, it should have been in neutral, I better put the clutch in or get it out of gear if you were driving standard. Nowadays, what do you do? You, sit, you open the door, you sit down in your car, you strap in a seatbelt, and away you go and you drive. And you're not even thinking about it, right? It's it's become automatic. You know, hopefully you are still paying some attention to what's going on out there, but but you know you're into an automatic. So there, there's a guy named I think Daniel Kahneman talks about type one and type two thinking, and type one is the automatic thinking, right? Two times three, six. You know, if I say twelve times uh, seventeen, you might be able to do that in your head, but you're going to have to think about it, right? That's type two thinking. Hang on, I come up with that. I did that without a calculator. No. Just like it's 10 times 17, which is 170, and then it's 2 times 17, which is 34, 170, 34 is 2. But you have to think about that, right? You don't know it. You know 2 times 3. It's 6. What you've done is you've created a pathway in your brain. There's a path in your brain which handles 2 times 3 for you because you used to do it a lot, right? And what your brain does a lot, it doesn't like to have to think about each time. So what it does, it lays down a pathway. Every time you use that pathway, it does what's called myelination. It myelinates it. It lays down some insulation on that pathway. So that pathway becomes very strong. So when I say 2 times 3, you say 6. And I say, how'd you get that? I don't know. It is, right? It just <laughs> is. Yeah. I mean, if you have to think about it, you can then tell me, oh, well, we're doing multiplying, so I need two groups of 3 and blah, 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 right? 
you get this? I don't know. So type one thinking is automatic thinking. It's how we get through most of our lives, right? We do things automatically. You don't want to have to think about a whole lot of stuff. Brains are lazy, right? It's like, yeah. I don't want to expend all the effort having to rethink about how to tie my shoes every day. Think about when you first learned to tie your shoes. Didn't go so well. Right? It's like you're tripping down the hall and you're it's like, you are, can you tie my shoes for me? Right. Then you learn tire. Do you think about tying your shoes now? No. Yes. Yeah. I don't. That's why I got Velcro. Velcro's for old folks, right? Yeah. Done. Okay? So you're gonna get to the point where you see root eight and you're gonna go to root two. Why? Because you will have done it a bunch of times, you will have laid down a pathway. You will have myelinated that pathway. And if you go home and ask your parents and say, hey, if the square root of eight, they may say two root two. It's been a long time since they've used that path, but it might still exist, right? You can ask them what the quadratic formula is. They might still know that, right? Yeah. And it's not like they're using it in their everyday lives, because nobody actually does, right? Why are we learning it? Because you have to know it. What's the square root of 3,600? 60. Yeah, 60. So you might say, well, it's the root of, well, 36 and 100, which is root 36, root 100, which is 6 times 10, which is 60. Oh. Okay. Do that without a calculator. That actually works. <laughs> I don't know. 60 squared? Really? I don't know. We saw them like the back. <laughs> what do you mean? This actually works or yeah. that actually works? It's 60. Oh, yeah, that works. 60. Right? Because I don't have, and I'm probably never going to get the two like I do. Like, yeah. well, it's like kind of, have to pair, so no, no, no. They just have to walk out there, put them out, turn them on, point to wherever it is they want to go. So <laughs> everybody would know that you're. Okay, um, the other thing is we want to turn a mixed radical back into an entire radical. Okay, and the reason we might do that is going to be a little more clear tomorrow when we do adding and subtracting radicals, they have to be like radicals, right? So we, we need to be able to convert mixed to entire and entire to mixed. So if we start with 4 root 5, so let's say express. 4 root 5 as an entire radical. So all we're going to do is we're going to back the process up, right? So you think about the process. What's the process? Do the process here and then we'll, we'll reverse it. So we have root 72 is the root of 36 times 2 is root 36, root 2 is 6 root 2. So we're going to start with 4 root 5. And we're going to start at the bottom, and we're going to work our way up. So what do I do with the number in front? Square it. I square it and write it under a square root sign. So what's the square of 4? So it's the root of 16 times the root of 5. Then we put them together under one radical sign. So it's the root of 16 times 5. You can do this in your head. What's 8 times 5? 40. You should know that one, right? That's a mile in 8. 16 times 5, you don't know. 8 times 5, you know. 40. Then what do you do? Double it. We only multiply by 8. We're supposed to multiply by 16. Right? 8. So you might not know 16 times 5, because generally we don't ask you to memorize the times tables up to the 16s or something, right? Maybe up to 12. Not 16. Could we just go 4 times 4 times 5? Sure. So 4 times 5 is 20. And then let's quadruple that and get 8. Yeah. 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 Come up with your own. Actually, I would probably go like 10 times 5 is 50, and 6 times 5 is 30, and that's 8. Yeah, or I got this thing I paid 100 bucks for. Well, my parents did. I don't know. <coughs> and it's root 80. Okay. So what do we do? We take the number in front of the radical sign and we write it under a radical sign. But to do that, what do we have to do with the number? We got to square it. <coughs> okay. Then we combine them under the radical sign. All right. So let's do another one. <coughs> Negative five, <coughs> negative five root seven. <clears throat> so 
So this point you say, whoa, okay, you, you've introduced something else. So do I want a square negative 5? If I do that, I'm going to get a positive number, right? So we know whatever this is equal to at the bottom, it has to be negative, right? Well, we can't change the sign of that. You can't say negative 5 root 7 is equal to positive square root something. So when we're doing this, we're going to say, all right, you know what? The negative sign, that's just going to stay out front. And I'm going to write the 5 underneath the root sign. So 5 is the square root of what? 25, which is negative. Now I'm going to put them together. So 25 times 7 goes negative square root 175. Okay. The original expression is negative. Yep. The final expression is negative. Yeah. So it didn't all of a sudden change, right? <clears throat> what are you going to see on a test? Negative 5 root 7 is equal to, and you're going to see root 175, negative the root of 175, the root of negative 175. Right? That's 3, I think of a 4. And some other thing that we think of, right? Like, I don't know. Square the 7 and multiply it by 5 or something. Right? No, we wouldn't do that. That's what 3 1 is split. 3 1 split is you got like three answers to look and one answer looks totally different. So what does that tell you? It's either the one that's totally different or it's not the one that's totally different. Right? So it sort of says, look at this carefully because that's either the answer or it really isn't the answer. Then which means you can eliminate it pretty easily. Why don't you put the negative sign in the <clears throat> So if I put the negative, if I squared <coughs> negative 5, I would get positive 25. Yeah. Right? Oh. And then the whole expression would become positive. And then you'd be sitting here saying negative 5 root 7 is the same as positive root 175. And it can't be true, right? Negative can't be equal to a positive. Okay. Now, that's going to be different when we do cubes. So let's go do some cubes. So we've done squares. Let's look at some cubes. Okay, so I got the cube root of 54. That's an entire radical. We want to express that as a mixed radical. So I need a perfect cube that goes into 54. What is it? Mm. 27, right? 54 divided by 8 is uh, some decimal. 54 divided by 27 is? So we factor the 54. We write it as a product of two numbers, one of which is a perfect cube. Okay. We then split it out to be the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. So make sure you're always writing that 3. That's called the index. Okay? If we don't write the index, what kind of root are we doing? Square root, right? So nothing written in there, no index, or the blank index is a square root. Why do we do that? Because we're doing square roots all the time. Most of the time we use square roots, so we just don't write in the number because we're lazy. What's the cube root of 27? <laughs> Sorry, I spoiled it. Spoiler alert, don't look. Three. <clears throat> what is the cube root of? Uh, negative 128. Okay, first off, can you do the cube root of a negative number? No. Yeah. 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 Can't do square, square root of a negative, but you do the cube root of a negative. Yeah. What do we know about the cube root of a negative number? Is it negative or is it positive? Yeah. It's got to be negative, right? So square roots, we know you got to have a number that's greater than or equal to zero. Cube roots, it's like, yeah, you get cubes of negative. Why? Because I'm going to multiply a negative times a negative, which is going to be a positive, times a negative. So I got a positive times a negative, right? So any odd power, you're going to pair up negative, right? This is positive, this is positive, and then I've got a negative. OK, so how are we going to write that? Well, we, we would cube. What cube goes into 128? 64. 64. Magic number, eh? It's both a square and a cube. OK, so let's say negative 64 times 2. I'm going to put the negative with the cube, right? The perfect cube. So now I'm going to split it out and write that as the cube root of negative 64. So that's where my negative sign is going. 
If I can, I'm going to pull a negative sign out of the cube root. So what's the cube root of negative 64? Not 4. Negative 4. So negative 4 times the cube root of 2. Okay? You go to your calculator, type in negative 4 cube root 2. You know what the cube root is on your calculator? It's in the math menu. Math number, whatever. 3, I think. 4, I don't know. So go cube root negative 128, enter, gives you some number. Uh, and then go negative 4 cube root 2, enter, gives you some number, which should look very similar to the number above, right? Like identical. Times when you check with your calculator when you don't get identical, right, is when you're doing some rounding, right? So round it to the nearest hundred. And you need to learn the difference between exact value and rounded values, right? If we say exact value, you'll never write down a decimal. Okay. You may have a radical, it could actually be a number, like 2, right? Or 2.25 could be a terminating decimal or a fraction. Those would be exact values, but you know, 7.13 where you're just cutting stuff off, that's not an exact value. That's rounded to nearest hundred. So RT cube, man. <clears throat> okay, what if we want to go the other way? So what if I'm doing um, three cube root seven? What's the procedure? What do I do with the 3? Cube it and stick it underneath the cube root sign, right? What's 3 cubed? <coughs> Trace it, right? It's up there. So if you want, you know, copy that down a sheet of paper, have it sitting with you while you're doing the homework, right? Eventually, you're going to lay down some pathways in your brain, you're going to insulate them up a little bit, right? Because you can do some homework, and you won't have that chart with you on the, on, on the test, but you know what? Even if you don't know, you'll something you'll at least know that 343, that was in my list, so I know it's a cube of something. And you can go into your calculator and go cube root 343, and it'll tell you 7. Or you can sit down and go 6 cube. Nope, too small, 7 cube. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so cube root of 27 times what? Cube root of 7. Now what do I do? Put them underneath one. Radical sign. So it's cube root of 27 times 7. If you do not have a pathway for in your brain, right? You have to multiply it out or use a calculator. 189. 189. What's 3 times 5? 15. Anybody reach for their calculator? Mm -hmm. So you know what? Copy down the chart of squares and cubes. Just do it on a separate sheet of paper. Just have it sitting there when you're doing this homework. So you just look at it and say, OK, which of these? And then have your calculator there too, right? You might not know that 216 goes into 648. But you can sit there and go 648 divided by 8. OK, look, same deal with cubes. If 8 goes into it, maybe 64 goes into it, right? Because 64 goes into 8, like something, you know, 8 goes into 216 into 512. 64 goes into 512. So, you know, if it's a really big number, start down here and try the bigger numbers. You know, it's a small number. If it's like 54, you don't need to bother dividing by 64 when, you know, that would be kind of silly. Okay. So divide by the biggest number that you can find, right? So it's 686, probably 512. You know, 729 definitely doesn't go in. 512, you know that doesn't go in. But oh, and you look at that. Well, that one goes in, right? Instead of starting here, maybe you should do that with this as well. Eh? Start at the the higher end. 128. Don't start with just four going in. Start with well, 100 doesn't go in. 81 doesn't go in. This that might. Okay, so play with that. Okay. Should we belabor this any longer? Here, let's just do one more with a negative. Negative 2 cube root 5. Well, the number under the radical sign, that, there's actually kind of two answers here which are both <coughs> correct, right? But here's what we're going to do. So can I put negative 2 under a cube root sign? Yes. And what is it? What happens when you cube negative 2? You get negative 8. 
I can't do that with squares, right? I can't say, oh, there's a negative 5, I'm going to square it and stick 25 under it, because in the end, we'll end up with a positive value. So we're going to say negative 8 cube root 5, which is the cube root of negative 8 times 5, which is the cube root of negative 40. So that's what we want to see. You know, another legitimate answer would be to go, it's the negative of the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 5, keeping the negative outside. Okay. So we're going to say negatives should be inside the radical. Okay. If it's a cube, a fifth, a seventh, a ninth, you're never going to see those. But a cube, you might see a fifth. So it can be negative? So it can be the cube root of negative 40 or the negative of the cube root of 40. Okay. This is preferred. Okay, that's preferred. The other one's not necessarily wrong, you know, but then you, you won't likely see it on a multiple choice answer. You'll see the cube root of negative 40, not the negative cube root of 40. Okay. So if we can, with cubes, when there's a negative under the radical sign, we're going to pull that negative out and have a negative expression. Negative 4 cube root 7 or whatever. Right. And when we put a negative back under the radical sign with cubes, we're going to cube the negative number, put the negative sign under the radical. Right? That way it doesn't get lost. Right? Negative cube root 40 is the next line, all of a sudden it turns into positive cube root 40 because you don't see if you had a negative there. It gets lost. Okay, good enough? What more could you ask for? Sure. Pause.